um, it's basically taking, and just like I was saying in the video, it's taking all of your known um, pressure at like one set number. So your pressure, let's say your volume uh, per mole. So like you would say 22.4 liters per mole and then whatever pressure unit you wanna use um, and whatever temperature you're using, which we know we use 273 Kelvin as our temperature. It's taking those values and basically saying, if I change this and this, what would my moles be now, right? And so basically using Pivner is a ratio specifically because they're giving you all of the values of R, okay? And so if you actually set up PV over NT equals R, then it's basically, if I kind of look at this, look at it this way, it's PV over NT, oops, over NT equals R. And we know our values for R. So like, for example, let's say we do it in atmospheres is 0 0.0821. And then it would be atmospheres times liters per mole Kelvin, which if we look, that's your pressure, that's your volume, that's your mole, that's your temperature. So basically this is saying P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. I want you to see this because you know, a lot of times people will look at an equation and just think like, um, I'm just gonna plug things into it and not really understand what the equation is doing for you, okay? And so the nice thing about this gas equation, this ideal gas equation is that it is a ratio and you are basically using standard values and you're calling that one of these, okay? My hope is that this helps you with part C, which is very important that you all get it right um, for your lab, okay? And it's not just come, gonna come up now, it's gonna come up um, when you go to take your gas test. So just make sure that you're aware of that and you're understanding um, the way that these equations work, okay? Now, if you only needed liters per mole, because your pressure and your temperature were constant, then that's fine because what you would do when anything is constant, you just cross it off. So I would say if I'm specifically looking for liters per mole, I could literally just do a ratio that way. So again, really important in this class that you understand ratios, okay? Ratios are gonna make a big difference. And so if I know, and in this case, remember they're directly related to each other. So if they're inversely related to each other, like pressure and volume are, then you would say P1V1 equals P2V2, um, and then they would be side by side, okay? And so if, but if it's uh, like Avogadro's law, then um, liters per mole equals liters per mole. We know, don't forget, at STP, it's always the same. At STP, our liter per mole value is always, let's flip over to Sparty here for a second. Um, it's always 22.4 liters per mole. That never changes. Um, but if you're not an STP, then things can be different, okay? So just always remembering that um, as well. Okay, go back to this. Okay, so um, most of the, a lot of the questions that have to do with gas laws are going to ask you to identify a gas. There's an unknown gas and you're supposed to figure out what the gas is, okay? So how are you supposed to figure out what the gas is? Well, you know, if it doesn't have a color and if it doesn't have a smell, um, then it might be difficult, right, to figure out what the gas is. So uh, you can't see it, you can't, you know, test it where you can't, you know, maybe you want to try to condense it um, and figure out where the condensation point is. Because if you guys remember, the condensation point is actually the same. Somebody unmute. Condensation point is also the same as what? Evaporation. Or what do we call that? We don't call it the evaporation. Boiling. Point. We call it the boiling point. Very good. And remember, evaporation is a cooling process where it's simply coming off of your, you're providing some energy where those molecules can actually steal that energy and escape, right? So evaporating is going to be a little bit different from um, boiling, right? Um, but boiling and condensing, that point, that temperature is the same. And so if you could figure out what that is, maybe you could look it up in a chart and figure out what the substance is, okay? But one of the popular ways is calculating um, molar mass 
using density, okay? Sometimes they're gonna ask you for the density of the gas, that's more rare. Usually what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, can you calculate the molar mass if we give you the density, okay? So we've got two equations. One of the statements is mine and one of the statements is Ms. Manowski's, okay? Um, if you guessed, uh, I don't know if you wanna figure out which one you think is me. Um, uh, mine is, um, Ms. Manowski always said, she's the sit, pee, dump, flush person. So um, she's always got her head in the gutter. No, I'm kidding, she doesn't. But um, So this one's actually Ms. Manowski's. This one is more useful. Okay, hers is way better. If you're going to remember one of them, remember this one, okay? Everybody unmute and on the count of three, we're gonna say mutts kick the dirt over their pee. We're gonna say it three times. Everybody unmute. Okay, ready? One, one two, two, three. Mutts kick the dirt over their pee. That's one time. Sorry, I need to, um, I need to pin myself again here. Sorry. Okay. All right, let's do it again. Ta take two. Ready? Go. Mods for their pee. Third time. Ready? One, two, three, go. Mods over their pee. Okay, so this is amazing. This is the best one to use because now this M right here is for molar mass. Okay. And if you're not sure, because sometimes people will think it's molarity and they're like, oh, I was looking for molarity. I didn't realize that that was molecular weight, okay? And so here's how you would figure this out. So, um, and then dirt, D is for density. So this is actually, I want you to make sure that you say that this is actually molecular weight. So grams, let's put grams per mole over here on this side. Um, and then D is for density, R is our gas constant, T is obviously our temperature, and then P is our pressure, okay? So if we use our units that we're used to, density is gonna be in grams per liter, Okay, um, our R value, depending on what we're using, we can do like we had before atmospheres, let's say times um, liters per Kelvin mole or per mole Kelvin, it doesn't really matter, but uh, per mole Kelvin. And then our temperature is going to be in Kelvin. And then we're going to divide that by our pressure. And so in this case, we were using atmospheres are for our pressure. Okay, so let's just cancel these out and see what we end up being left with. Okay, so this is um, our Kelvin is going to cancel out with our Kelvin, so that's good. Our liters is going to are going to cancel out with our per liter right there, and then we have I should have done that as numerator denominator. Oh, and then we've got atmospheres, and then divided by divided by. So this is our atmospheres that's going to cancel out as well. And what do we see? We're left with exactly what we wanted, which is grams per mole. Okay, so you can see that everything else canceled out. We're left with grams per mole. So if you um, weren't sure what, the, what that is, you can always use the units to try to figure out, is this molarity or is this molar mass? What are we doing here? What is this M for? Okay, okay so I do like to rearrange it. I rearrange it right away if I'm looking for density. So pretty easy. Remember, you're just gonna cross multiply. So if instead I was looking for D, I would just switch it. Actually, let's do it right now. Oh, this first one wants the molecular weight, the second one wants the density. Okay, so let's do um, the first one. The density of the gas is measured at 1.50 atmospheres. That is not the density, okay? And 27 degrees Celsius found to be this value. So that's our density mass per unit volume is gonna be your density. Always make sure it's grams per liter so that your units cancel out properly. So if it's in kilograms, you'll want to change it. If it's in milliliters, you'll want to change it. And we know we're looking for molar mass. Okay, so let's write our equation down. Mutts kick dirt over the P. Okay, so um, our density, let's go ahead and fill in our density. So we have 1.95, oh, I'm going to do it over here instead. Okay, 1.95 grams per liter. Okay. Which R do we want to use? Well, I can see that we're in atmospheres. So let's use the 0 0.0821 or 0 0.08206 is what's on the equation sheet. Liters times atmospheres per Kelvin mole. Okay, and then our temperature, is it 27 degrees Celsius? Kelvin. No, what is it? 300? 
Did I do that right? 273 plus 27, 300 Kelvin. Okay, so we add 273 to that. We're going to divide by our pressure, which is 1.50 atmospheres. Okay, let's calculate this. And I've got somebody else try to to make sure I don't make a mistake, please. 0 0.08206 times 300 divided by 1.5. I am getting 32.0 grams per mole. If this were diatomic, the second question, what is the identity of the gas? Somebody on mute, what should this be if it were diatomic? Oxygen. Yes, it would be O2, perfect. Because we know oxygen is 16 grams per mole, so that would be O2, okay. 15D, a gas consisting of only carbon and hydrogen has an empirical formula, okay? So this is our empirical formula. The gas has a density of this, this, and then we have our millimeters of mercury, determine the molar mass and the molecular formula of the gas. Okay, so we know it's CH2, okay? Which the, uh, if we add that up, carbon's 12 and each hydrogen is one, 1.001, but um, let's just say uh, that it's around 14, right? So we kind of know around what it might be, but because that's the empirical formula, it might be times two, it might be times three. We're not gonna do it that way. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna use the information to be able to calculate the molecular weight. And then, see, I thought I did one where it was the opposite, but it's not. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and plug this in again. So in this case here, I have the same thing. Big M equals dirt over P. We know our density, we know our temperature, and we know our um, pressure. So we can just go ahead and fill that in. So go ahead and try this out. I don't know why I did the same one. I have no idea. 1.65 grams per liter, 0 0.08206. And again, it's still 300 Kelvin. And now we've got um, 734. Oh, okay. So that's why I did this one. So uh, we can either change our R value uh, that's why I did this. I wanted to do a quick, like, how do you convert real fast? Because last year, I remember there were people that weren't sure how to do their conversions. Easiest thing to do is to use your STP values. So I'm going to switch from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. Okay. Now, um, the millimeter mercury value, 62.4, is on um, the equation sheet but the KPA one is not, it's 8.31. So sometimes it's just easier to just remember it, but just in case, okay. So I've got um, 760 millimeters of mercury for one atmosphere. So 734 divided by 760. Again, you guys, if I make a mistake, please let me know. I've got 0.966 atmospheres. And so this is 0.966 atmospheres. Again, or we could have just used 62.36, I think is what they use on the equation sheet. Okay, so we've got 1.65 times 0 0.08206 times 300 divided by 0.966. And I'm getting 42.0 grams per mole. How am I supposed to figure out the formula now? I'm supposed to figure out what the formula is of this. What do you guys think? What do I do to figure out the formula? Because this is the empirical formula, which means the molecular can be times two, times three, times four. What do I do? What's the easiest don't thing you, to do? Don't you divide um, the actual by like the theoretical? Yes. Multiplier? So what I'm gonna do, I call it the me equation. I divide the molecular, which is the one we just found, the 42, divided by the empirical. And so the empirical is basically 14, okay, about 14. So if I do 42 divided by 14, I'm getting three. And you want a whole number. You want to make sure it's a whole number. And so that means I'm going to multiply CH2 by three. So I get C3H6 as my answer. I'm going to keep that on the box just so you guys can see. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, and then I think maybe we'll, I just want to see if I have to do, I don't think I have to do this right now. Let me just see. Um, partial pressures.
Okay. Um, yes, number 21. I think the other two we're okay with, but I want to do number 21 and then we can come back and do 19 and 20 um, on Wednesday. Simple solid is heated. Oxygen is displaced by water. Calculate the partial pressure of oxygen. Yeah, let's do this one real quick. Okay, pretty easy. Um, you need to make sure that you remember this for the lab too. This is very important for this lab. So um, it says that the oxygen produced at 22 degrees Celsius. So they're telling us the temperature here and a total pressure of this. Calculate the partial pressure of the oxygen. So what are we looking for? We're looking for PO2. That's what we're looking for is PO2. And then they give us the vapor pressure of water is 21 torr. Now you're looking at this and you're like, I don't know, P1, V1, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, but the temperature doesn't change. Wrong, you're not doing that, okay? So sometimes we wanna just like start throwing things in and then it doesn't make any sense, okay? That doesn't make any sense. So what they're really asking us for here is, this is one of those collecting over water problems, okay? This is a Dalton's law collecting over water problems. It is so very simple but it's also so very easy to make a mistake and miss this, okay? Anybody wanna tell me what I'm supposed to do here? Subtract 21 tor from 754 tor. Oh, very good, that's it. That's all you have to do is subtract. Awesome, why? Because the total pressure is equal to the partial pressures added. But, <laughs> excuse me, the only gas that's supposed to be in here is oxygen. So it's supposed to be just oxygen. But because it's collected over water, so it says it's co collected by displacement, that's going to be your tip. It's collected by displacement of water, we actually have to say plus H2O, okay? And so because of that, the total pressure, which is the surrounding pressure, because what's going to happen is the gas in the tube, whatever you collect, as long as you collected it over water, it's going to come to equilibrium with the pressure of the room, okay? So whatever the pressure of the room is right now, I could figure it out just by, now it's, it's gonna be, there's gonna be error to it because if I look at weather, the weather channel, it's not telling me in this particular room what the pressure is, it's gonna tell me what it is in West Bloomfield, but it's about the same, okay? It should be around the same. So I figure out what my total pressure is and that should be equal to the total pressure inside the container. Remember when we were talking about the bag of chips and we said that the molecules inside are want to look like the molecules on the outside and that's why your bag starts to inflate. So if you go up in the atmosphere and there are, the molecules are more spread out as you go up higher, well, inside of your bag, those molecules want to also spread out more and they're gonna push your bag out, okay? Same thing here, it's the same idea, okay? So our total pressure, is 21 tor. They're giving us that. Just make sure always that you check your units as usual um, because you might have to convert something. And so I'm looking for my PO2 and then my pressure of my water, they give us right here. That comes from a chart, okay? So they'll give you what the water vapor pressure is um, from, uh, from a chart. And so this is 21 tor. And so our, oh, oops, just kidding. Sorry, I did my total pressure wrong. You guys have to correct me on this. Okay, total pressure is, sorry. Total pressure is, not right. Total pressure is 754 torr. 754. You're probably waiting for a good time to interrupt me. Okay, so 754 is my total and then my PO2 and my oxygen. So 754 minus my 21 is giving me 733. So my PO2 is 7. 33 tour. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that you remember that because in this lab, we are collecting over water. 